Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. An abortive South African National Defence Force project to acquire spy satellite from Russia has suddenly been resurrected again. Keith Campbell tells us more. Keith, why has this issue come up again? Well, what happened was that the official opposition uh, shadow spokesman for defence and military veterans, David Mania, issued a statement uh, basically uh, bringing the issue back into public attention, uh, wanting to know uh, if the program was still underway and uh, wanting to know uh, the ex issues of expenditure and what happened to the program and uh, what had happened to all the money that uh, he believed had been spent on the program. And what do we know about the project? Well, very little in fact. It was Engineering News that actually broke the story way back in 2008. And that was, well, broke the story, reported the story because the, it was actually broken accidentally by the then head of the Russian space agency, Roscosmos, uh, who uh, told uh, journalists uh, that the there uh, had been a severe disagreement between the South African and Russian ministries of defense over a satellite project. And as a result, the Russian Ministry of Defense was refusing to launch South Africa's microsatellite Sumbandila. Originally, the plan had been that Sumbandila would have been launched by a converted Russian ballistic missile from a Russian Navy uh, missile submarine. Um, that never happened. What ultimately happened was that Roscosmos, which is a civilian agency and completely separate from the Ministry of Defense, launched uh, Sumbandila on a civilian rocket from a civilian space base. Uh, so that's how the story uh, surfaced, uh, and we reported on it. And I was subsequently told that the program had been terminated. Uh, Mr. Mania produces a few extra facts confirms it was a spy satellite. Uh, we had proposed, we had uh, balanced the probability that the program was a spy satellite uh, that had not been divulged. That's a radar spy satellite using radar system to ga gather images on the ground, not camera system. Uh, that the contra original contract was signed in 2006 uh, with a specific Russian company uh, and that the budget had been 1.2 billion rand and the program had been a codename Project Flute or Project Consolidated Flute. But basically that's all we know for a fact. Uh, we do not know how much money was actually spent on the program. Uh, as I said, uh, Mr. Mania revealed the budget was 1.2 billion rand. He keeps talking about a 1 billion rand satellite project and where has the money gone? But we actually have no idea how much money was spent, whether it was a billion rand or 100,000 rand. Um, it is clear that some money must have been spent, but just how much money was spent uh, is very, very unclear. The other thing is, as I said, we were told that the program was dead. The spy satellite that is got the attention is uh, a craft called the Condor, uh, the first one of which was launched uh, last year and is operated by the Russian Aerospace Defense Forces, as they're called, uh, who are responsible for all Russian uh, military satellites, whether spy, communication, or whatever, as long with anti-missile defense systems and so on. Uh, now, the thing is, the Condor took a very long time to develop. Although it was originally ordered in 1997, shortage of funds caused the Russian Ministry of Defense to halt funding. And the program was re only reactivated uh, maybe uh, a decade later when uh, Ministry of Defense funding became available again. The long time taken to get the machine, the spacecraft built and operational, 
does not suggest that there was any extra outside of meaning foreign funding of the program. The other point to make is that the program broke up in such acrimony that is extremely unlikely that South Africa and Russia would have got back together on this program. Uh, there is thus at the moment virtually no information available about whether this program is still underway or not and at the moment I am personally skeptical of that there is such a program um, certainly involving Russia as I say the original program broke up in great acrimony and it is difficult to see them getting back together again so quickly. And can the acquisition of such a satellite be justified? Well, South Africa does have a need to be able to gather strategic intelligence uh, about what is going on elsewhere in the continent because this does directly or indirectly affect South Africa. Uh, issues like um, the shore organization, the capabilities of Somali pirates, for example. Uh, that at one point seemed an awful long way away from South Africa and then it reached the Mozambique Channel and the South African Navy had to be deployed on security patrols. And then there are issues like uh, support the peacekeeping operations in uh, other African countries, issues of uh, the uh, bases for rebels, supply routes for rebels. I mean, many of these rebel movements in Africa are not unsophisticated. They're not ragtag and bobtail outfits. They're well organized and well equipped and they have serious logistic lines and uh, they can have a, a quite a significant base complexes. All of that uh, could be uh, surveyed from space. However, I would point out that spy satellites also have enormous limitations. What you see in Hollywood is complete nonsense. Uh, and though radar satellites have got the great advantage that they can see through cloud, which optical satellites, when you stop to think of it, can't, um, they can still be decoyed and they can still be confused in the way that any other radar system can. And I would argue that in the case of South Africa, it would make more sense investing in two or three strategic reconnaissance aircraft for the Air Force, uh, which are much more flexible than spy satellites, and perhaps uh, defense providing some funding to get a higher quality optical sensor on South African future uh, civilian Earth observation satellites so they can provide data of uh, greater use to the military. That would also stimulate, of course, the high technology sector in South Africa. I would say if they're putting money into satellites, put them into the South African satellites. But uh, of course, um, I'm not in charge, so I don't know what decisions have been made. And it is possible, of course, that South Africa has gone to the satellite project, but with someone other than the Russians and they may be too embarrassed for political reasons uh, to admit who their partners are. Basically, uh, you've got a choice. If, it, if it's not the Russians, the Americans won't provide this technology, forget it. That leaves France and Israel, basically. And uh, there are, there's a strong anti-Israeli lobby in South Africa and there is uh, a bit of an anti-French lobby in South Africa. So it may be there is a satellite program, but I don't think it involves the Russians. Great. Thanks, Keith. That is the second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.